Hey everyone, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today for a new video. I'm going to be using contents from Simon Says Stamps July 2022 card kit called You Shine. And I'm really excited about this kit because I actually illustrated the stamp set and I've been dying to use it. So I have two cards that I made using the stamp set and the kit. And I hope you're inspired by these projects to use the techniques that I'm sharing today, maybe with the kit or with things that you already have in your stash. So let's talk about this card first with the window. So I created this really cute window scene using the stamp set that's in the kit called You Shine. And I also pulled in one of the Tim Holtz window and frames baseboards. You get a whole set of these in the kit. And I'm going to color this window frame with some of the foundry wax. I'm not gonna color the whole thing, I'm just gonna kind of spot color it so that it has some flashes of gold. So I mixed up the foundry wax using the paintbrush that's in the kit. I'm going to just start brushing on some of that wax and I'm focusing it in just different random areas to kind of give it a distressed look. I thought this would look cute with a watercolored window box. When I designed the stamp set, I made sure that the window box that is in the stamp set is the perfect size to work with many of the larger window frames that are part of this Tim Holtz baseboard set. So you get all these things in the kit and you can create some really cute scenes with it. I'm heating the foundry wax after applying it so that it will activate it and give it that gorgeous gilded finish. The foundry wax really is magical once you add heat to it. You just need to add a little bit. It doesn't need to be overly heated. And so now we have this cute window that has a lot of gold accents to it. I'm going to stamp the window box that's from the stamp set onto some watercolor paper. And I'm going to color first with regular watercolors. I colored my second card with distress inks and did a watercoloring technique with those. So just goes to show you that you don't necessarily have to have watercolors in order to do watercoloring. But if you do have watercolors, I am using some Daniel Smith watercolors and I'm just using very few colors to create these shades for my window box. I also am trying to keep some white areas. I love a slightly imperfect watercoloring. My favorite look is when you've got those hard lines, you've got some white areas, and the colors don't necessarily blend perfectly together. There's something about that look that I just absolutely adore. So when I create this look, I typically will throw down some color somewhere, blend in a bit of water, but I don't blend the whole thing out. I leave some of that intense color in certain spots, and when it dries, it creates a hard line, as you can see on some of these petals and leaves. So I'm gonna wrap up the coloring by adding a little bit more layers to the flowers. Again, not blending that out completely so that we still get those hard lines. And I'll also add some texture to the window box because I want it to look like wood. And what I did was after starting to add those striations of color, I did blend them out a little bit just to soften them. So from the stamp set, I also stamped a B and I'm going to color him, of course, black and yellow. And I also did a little bit of blue on his wings. When I watercolored the bee, I really wanted to give him that fuzzy look. So what I did was I colored the bee yellow, then I brought in more black. And with the black, I'm going to allow that to start blending into the yellow, because now the yellow is wet, and so we're gonna get a little bit of blending here. And so that's going to give me that nice fuzzy look that a classic bee would have. All right, so now we have our window frame and we're going to measure this onto some pattern paper from the kit. I'm roughly just marking this out so that way I can bring this over to my mini Tim Holtz trimmer and then just trim this paper down to fit. So this is going to go behind our window. So we'll have this nice pretty pattern paper peeking out from behind it and it's perfectly sized now. No measurement involved. I'm gonna put foam tape on the back side of my window frame and then pop this up. If you notice, I made sure to trim this panel down so that the little bee on the pattern paper would be visible through the window. So my plan is to have that bee and then the bee that I watercolored layered here on top of the window so we have a little bit of dimension going here. One bee looks like it's in the background, the other one looks like it's in the foreground. I'm going to attach my window frame directly onto a white card base. This is from Simon Says Stamp. And I'm just using red line tape for this because it's a heavy piece and I wanted to make sure that it would hold. 
So Simon Says Stamp Redline Tape is great for adhering so many different things, including more trickier items like this. So that's why I use the Redline Tape. And then I just put a couple pieces of foam tape along the bottom of the window frame and popped my little flower box up over top. I just love how this turns out. It looks really cute. All right, so now we need to move on and add a sentiment. So I had some black cardstock. I'm stamping this happy birthday sentiment twice. I've found that I like stamping a sentiment with embossing ink twice just to make sure I get a really good coverage because sometimes I don't press down hard enough and so then there's certain areas that don't necessarily get completely covered with embossing ink. So I find that stamping twice, I am ensured that I'm going to get a good stamping because I did it more than once. So after I heat set the embossing powder, I have this really nice bright white greeting on top of this black cardstock, which I'm going to fussy cut out. You don't have to fussy cut it, you could just trim this down into a little rectangle, but I like the look of the fussy cut sentiment, so that's why I went ahead and did that. Now there are coordinating dies for the U Shine stamp set, I just don't have them, so be sure to check those out if you like having coordinating dies. So I'll just pop the B up onto the window frame with a couple pieces of foam tape. And at that point we're pretty much wrapped up with the card. The last thing I did was I pulled in some twine. I really love this teal and white twine. It matched nicely with the papers. And I'm just gonna tie this into a simple little bow along the left hand side of my card and trim down the strings so that way they're a little shorter. And I thought I was done here at this point, but then I realized I wanted to add a tiny bit more of that foundry wax here and there. So I pulled in that bottle and my paintbrush once more, and I'm carefully dabbing foundry wax on the yellow area. So the lemons and the bee, and I'll just apply a small amount and then heat that up with my heat tool. So that way that gives it the beautiful gilded finish. And I liked that much better. So now that is very consistent with the window frame and it ties everything in nicely and we get more of that gold coming through the card. All right, so now let's try using that foundry wax on something else. There is a super cute embossing folder. It's actually an emboss and cut embossing folder from Simon Says Stamp. It's called Flower Garden. And I'm going to use that to create a really cute frame for this card. So I'm going to take the embossing folder and a piece of blue cardstock. I'm going to stick this inside of the embossing folder and then run this through my die cut machine. Once I have embossed the folder, it also cut that cute little window out and I'm just gonna trim it down so it's a nice little square. With the foundry wax, I'm going to start applying that with my finger to start creating some nice burnished areas over top of those embossed details. I'm going to work in layers here so that way I build it up and create the look I'm going for. So foundry wax first and I heat set it. I brought in more foundry wax and this time I'm going a little bit heavier. I didn't want to go too heavy all at once because I want to gradually build this up and get the look that I'm going for. I'm trying to go for a vintage frame here. I'll heat set this next layer and then I'm going to bring in some paint. So I started off first with white acrylic paint. This is going to create some lighter areas and as it overlaps with the foundry wax, that will also lighten those areas up too. It is slightly translucent, so you're gonna be able to see some of it through the paint. So I added the white paint first, then I brought in Tim Holtz Distress Paint in Faded Jeans. So I'm adding this in striations across the panel here leaving the white areas and the gold and even the blue cardstock to show through. Once those dried, I brought in more foundry wax and this time with a brush, I'm going to start applying it. And this time I'm going very heavy. I'm focusing it in just certain areas and then all the way around the edges. Once I heat set this and the foundry wax has fully set, you're going to see how it has this gorgeous gold frame finish. It's very, very vintagey and I love how it looks. So I'm gonna pair that up with some of the pattern papers and also one of the lemons from the U Shine stamp set. This time I'm watercoloring with Distress Ink. So if you don't have watercolors, you can totally use your Distress Inks to create those watercolor effects. I really like how they move and react with water, so they do a really nice job of creating a watercolor finish. I colored, of course, the lemon yellow and I used teals and greens to color in the leaves. I added a bit of foundry wax onto the lemon as well. This time, just some splatters though. I just wanted a little bit here and there and nothing too crazy. 
I'll use my heat tool, of course, to set this. You always want to make sure you set your foundry wax before finishing up your project. On some white cardstock, I'm going to stamp a sentiment that says, you're sweet. I'm stamping this with embossing ink, so you can't see it right now. But what we're going to do is we're going to add white embossing powder over top of the sentiment, heat set it, and then with some distress ink, we're going to do some emboss resist because I wanted a nice blue cardstock in faded jeans that would match nicely with my frame. But I didn't have any cardstock that perfectly matched that frame, so I'm just gonna make my own. So here I'm taking the faded jeans distress ink pad and I'm just smushing this over top of the sentiment. Of course, the embossing is resisting that ink and if there was any excess ink sitting on top of the sentiment, I just buffed it off with a cloth. Now I can cut my sentiment out whether you want to fussy cut it or cut it down into a rectangle, it's totally up to you. But I just cut the sentiment out and now look how good that looks with our frame. So I attached a square of pattern paper onto my card, which is a four and a quarter square card. That vintage frame is layered on top. And then of course I glued lemon and the sentiment onto the card as well. I'm finishing things up with a few touches. I am using some of that same twine that I used for the first card and a button. And I'm going to add these little embellishments on top of the lemon. I thought this added a perfect finishing touch to the card and I love the quirkiness of it. It goes really well with the vintage style of that frame that has all that beautiful gilding and the pretty colors from the paint. I just love how both of these cards turned out using the July 2022 card kit from Simon Says Stamp called You Shine. If you're interested in the kit, please be sure to check out the video description or my blog for details on those products. All the products that I used are listed there, so you should be sure to check that out if there's anything that caught your eye. I hope you were inspired by these ideas and will try these out in your next card projects. Thanks so much for tuning in. I will be back soon with more to share with you all. But until I see you again, I hope everyone has a fabulous day. Bye.